Welcome to the Everybody Hates Shoe podcast with your host, Jay Schuler and Myrak. This is episode 303, The Concept of Family. On today's episode, Jay Schuler and Myrak discuss the concept of dating, sex, marriage, and divorce, and what it all means in today's climate. Take the dive. Welcome back to the Everybody Hates Shoe podcast. My name is Jay Schuler, and this is Myrak. And we are back with episode 303, The Concept of Family dating, sex, marriage, and divorce. That's my expertise right here. This is your expertise. You've been waiting like for this one. I single people give like, well, some single people. I feel like I give good dating advice. How, 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 how the hell does a single person give good dating advice? Because I'm single because I learn from my mistakes, you know? You know, there's a other, other <laughs> side to that coin that maybe. You're single because you're not learning from those no, mistakes. I'm single because <laughs> let's go into the first question. Because I'm single for <laughs> oh, the first question is what what's dating like today for See? all of you out there? And that answers why I'm single. <laughs> it's horrible out here. I could not imagine the streets uh, is toxic. I feel like if you got your man back here like 2018, 2019, you was like saved yep. by the bell. That's literally the truth. Because <laughs> soon as like soon as March of 2020 hit, probably the end of 2019, it got real ghetto out here. Like, oh my God. It got ghetto. I met my wife in uh April of 2017. See? But that was through social media. It was through a dating app. Mm. Okay, yep. I'm, I was I'm shut up. I was networking. Yep. But no, but it was but 2017 though. It's yeah. still it's still in that time frame that it's you said. It's in that time frame where shit was still normal. Yep, because I felt like if 2 years later, no, I I'd still be single. I would still be single. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's it just seems, I don't know. It just seems so hard like even all right, even uh pandemic, post pandemic how are you meeting people? So post pandemic, pandemic, I feel like I don't know how other people mean people. I've heard people say they be on like dating sites. Um, I don't know. I've tried. Well, I played around on it. I really wasn't taking it serious. I was just trying to get followers on Instagram. <laughs> that's what, that's another thing it's good for. It's literally it's the best for that but, and networking. Um, <laughs> but. I feel like it's just weird because the pandemic is where people was getting that free money. So everybody was just living a fake life, kind of. Here, I'm going to just say, I live in Atlanta, so the dating pool here is definitely horrible. Like, you're not going to find anybody like, here. See, I worked through the pandemic, but I was like, I envied people that was getting that check and at home because like... I mean, if you're being safe and you're quarantining, like, you, you you were able to drive places. How are you not, like, meeting up with people? Like, I don't, like, what? Not not you in general. I, I mean, like, just I people, was like. I outside during the pandemic. You know, Atlanta did not shut down. Exactly. So, I'm so, like, how were people not still connecting or having, I don't. Because people were not thinking about. People don't be thinking about dating. They just be out here. So people were still out with with chances of getting COVID. the COVID and not They looking like, for sneaky links. That's the whole pandemic was sneaky link era. Sneaky link era during a pandemic? Yeah. That's why that's why I was sick. That's why <laughs> that's why that's why the numbers kept was, going up. It was sneaky link. Like everybody was out here baby effing. That's that that makes sense because didn't didn't uh, a lot of pregnancies happen too? Yes, yeah. it was like year round winter because you couldn't be outside. <laughs> <laughs> so they was out here baby effing for years, and them pandemic babies is strong and they is smart because see I I don't know why they strong and smart, but they was out here. I feel like if you already look at our society and you think of. Um, the insecurities that especially men have, but both men and women. Mm -hmm. And then you think about how we are with social media, how um, revealing we can be with our posts and things like that. 
if we're showing off bodies and all that stuff, body positive, all that good stuff. But like, I feel like you would really have to be confident and sure of who you are to be comfortable with dating someone in this climate when people are making their money off of social media, uh, creating brands off of social media where they have to be the face of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, a lot of men are subconsciously insecure. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of men, but I just feel like no, 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 no. Are. We, 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 we are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, uh, completely insecure, completely insecure. Yeah, subconsciously, because they don't want to admit it, but they have um different characteristics that show that they're a little insecure. Um, and me personally, like when it comes to dating, I just feel like it's hard for me to just change for anybody. So it will have to be like this, like it will have, we have to meet in the middle. Like I can't just change my ways or something that I've been doing before you because you want it done now. That's weird. And just like the dating pool now, number one, the dating pool in Atlanta, like the men think all the girls want to be a city girl. They want you for your money. You know, we always trying to get over you. And the girls just think all the men are players or they want a scammer. They want this social media lifestyle where you got the racks up to your ear, he got the racks. Like, girl, be realistic. People, this man work at Walgreens. But but but, but relationships <laughs> are a compromise. Though. It's a compromise. But that's to me that's strange if someone to approach you and be like, Oh, well, you know, you bathing suit photos. I don't know. You got bathing suit photos up. Uh, in videos, oh, uh, rah, 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 I got an you issue. Rah, 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 rah. How how do you have? Isn't that how I I, I peeped you anyways? Isn't like, it? Then let's see your... You will be surprised. I dated someone like that before. But that's that's the, that's the insecurity though. Mm -hmm. Like all of that and stuff. And they would deny being insecure. It was like, oh my god, it was so crazy. But even if you even what you're saying, like the the what people are after the perception of money we're going out all the time is a social media thing mm -hmm. even when you talk about men subconsciously being insecure but you can see the signs it's all in the culture of rap music mm -hmm. tell me this how is it popular in rap music to fuck a bitch no no not not like not actually fuck like fuck a bitch mm -hmm. i'm i'm for my homies i'm gonna die for my homies okay. i'm supposed to go to jail for my homies uh -huh. but fuck a bitch and i let my dudes run train on her and we all share her that's yeah. literally what the culture is of hip-hop how insecure does that sound very because you and don't want to be hurt it, it definitely <laughs> falls into the relationships because men will put their friendships before the relationship but when you like down bad or when you down and out who you running to? Because it ain't them friends. It's like very rare and few that when, when men are down, they're running to their homeboys for that help or that push because not since they are embarrassed to say what they're going through. Unless you so, got real homies. Exactly. exactly. So, so they're going to go to that woman. She has to be there. But as soon as she do the smallest little thing, who you running to? The homeboys to go out in the streets and be doing whatever. Oops, sorry. Doing whatever that y'all doing. So it is weird. Like, I don't know, because I've, I've just been very... I've been trying to practice healthy dating. Um, How are you doing that, though? So, I'm learning... My problem was I don't know how to communicate my feelings properly. And Wait. I am always, like... I'm always trying to be, like, the homegirl and try to act like nothing bothers me. And um, lately, I've been learning how to communicate... I've been practicing. I've been being honest, you know. Try not to waste people's time because I for, I feel like I'm learning that just because a man is a good man, I mean that he's a man for you. Because some people be boring, like, oh, my God. Some people be boring and some people be creeps, y'all, like, oh, my God. And it's just, like, no offense to y'all. Like, I can have a conversation, but I don't want to talk to you. I want to get – because I just <laughs> want to see where we are with the questions because I want to get to the creep thing. But one thing I want to say about – um dating okay we're almost a creep but the, the next thing is going to be uh but one thing i want to say about dating though is that that's what i use dating for is to find out what i liked and what i didn't and that's where i'm at with it like i'm learning what i like and what i don't like and i'm just it's a journey like it's just not something that you just rush into that's what i'm learning like it's a journey you're practicing until you meet that person so but, but see that's what see and that's what i'm learning in marriage now is that that still continues mm -hmm. like i don't know like we have this idea and we'll get into the and i think in a couple of questions but the idea of marriage and what it's supposed to be it's like we're dating to get to this one big thing and we blow it up and we're like 
but there's still work yeah, to be had. Definitely. It's still a relationship. You're still finding what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what you need. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and those needs and wants are very important and compromise oh, again. That's a big word. It's a, because now, like, you know, there's really the differences between marriage and like a, a, a long term relationship. There's not many, especially if you're living together. Mm -hmm. You're going to see those overlaps. But before we get all the way into that, because you just said that, I was like, ooh, um, sex on the first date. What are your feelings? <laughs> I know that's such like just just to ask a lady that uh, she has she's had the questions we've had the questions for a minute I just don't want y'all to think I was just like uh, how do you feel about sex on the first day <laughs> it wasn't like that guys yeah not putting her uh, on the spot but still putting her on the spot though um from my experience I feel like the best relationships happen off of sex on the first day <laughs> my thing is. We have to always think about where these concepts come from. Because um, <laughs> I just feel like, who said it was a crime? I mean, Lord, forgive me. We shouldn't be doing that. But I don't think it's a crime. I do not think it's a crime to have sex on the first date. Um, those are usually, those, it's a lot of fun when that does happen. I, that's how I feel. Like, I just feel like at this point, you know. You kind of know your person a little bit, even though it's like surface level. It's definitely surface level. Um, I've never had a, one of those go anywhere other than. Yeah, like it's very <laughs> surface level unless you know how to work it. I've been listening to a little bit of books. So it's just like if you're going to do the sex on the first date, you have to like after the first time, you got to kind of be like about your business like you can't get digmatized that very first time now you over now y'all together now that's my man my man my man like I, he ain't answering the phone he like you just feel like that many the prize oh jesus i'm messing this word up prioritize you like that is crazy girl it was just sex and it's hand in hand because you don't know how certain men look at that because some men be like oh she she, what is it? Little Caesar, she I, hot and ready, like. But but the thing about it is just like I was telling you before the podcast, I was like, I was getting upset, but then I realized the problems that I was having, someone would would like to have some of these problems. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you have to look at the other side of the coin. She's doing it, and you doing it too, bro. Right. <laughs> like, so you just you a slut just you, like her. You're, that even you little Caesar, you hot and ready too. <laughs> Everybody hot and ready. No, yeah, there's no real. crime. So it's like it's really no no <laughs> crime. I just feel like <laughs> I just feel like um, it's you know a double standard when it comes to that. Oh, definitely. Men and women, and I just feel like if you are interested in that person, I feel like you need to be interested in that person before the sex. Don't let the sex make you like that person. It should have been there before. Because I have done that before. Like, I did not like somebody. Then they laid it down. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me stick around a little bit more. But no, you got to. <laughs> it has to be mutual. Like, you know, y'all both. You got to. Y'all have to continue to grow y'all relationship and that intimacy after having that sex on the first date. So let's, let's go into the next question. Red flags on first date uh, slash beginning of the date. And uh, what are the creepy signals? <laughs> what are the creepy signals that you... I just feel like... <laughs> I, red flags is oversharing. <laughs> and oversharing pours into being a creep. Because certain <laughs> things... Certain things I just don't want to know after day oh, hold three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cause you, cause I, you already got me so interested. <laughs> and what are you, without putting anything on blast, any of your personal stuff, like, can you give like an example that's not the real thing maybe or something that's like, what was something that was like oversharing? On the, this, the first date? Or just, okay, not even oversharing, but just being like, well, maybe it is oversharing, but like being so um i don't know the word like here's an example <laughs> i hope this person does not she watch said, this here's but an example if he do watch it he i think we kind of had the conversation and he just knows it went over don't be upset we're not but <laughs> i had recently went on a date with someone and they asked me how much tattoos i had i was like oh i have like 10 tattoos or whatever so at the end of the day he was like, you want to come back to my room and show me your tattoos? 
mind you, some of my tattoos are in place where I have to remove clothing. So it's like, excuse me. That 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 was the whole. I think that was the whole point. That's like flirtation. He just he he wasn't reading the room. It was date, like two. For real, yo, like I mean, we just talked about but sex in the, the first. okay. I'm sorry, that doesn't sound contradicting, but you okay. can pick up the vibes of somebody feeling you like that. Like I'm not sending okay. You're saying that the, no signals that, like that. That's so why the why first. That's you? why the first date nothing happened. So yeah. the second date. So why do you think and, exactly? So okay, so why did you go on this date? <laughs> you know, Are you giving it a chance thank or you. for a meal? I was <laughs> trying to give it a chance. Maybe a meal. I know about I know about this shit. <laughs> but I was really trying to give it a chance. Like one thing I'm learning about myself though when it comes to dating is if you get on my nerves, I would rather go by myself. I'm swear to God, I will pay and go by myself and enjoy my time. <laughs> I'll be on FaceTime. I will sit and watch Netflix at the bar. Cause you get on my nerves. Like I don't I don't know how the girl like I been listening to this book um, about uh, what is it? It's by it's by this author, and it called it's called Whole Tactics, and it's really it sounds crazy, but it was about how to like basically finesse men, y'all. Don't don't if that's what y'all want to do, listen to it. I but mean, the more I listen to it, the more I realized much. that I I was not made for that because. I can't sit up here and lie and leave people on because I get aggravated real fast. And what's, what's the name of this book? It's called Whole Tactics by J. L. Lambert. G. L. It, Lambert. This sounds like something like Forty Eight. You know the Forty Eight Laws of Power. I actually have that book down on my audio book. Yeah, it's like one of those things where you can listen to it, but like if you're not, if you have morals, it'll be hard to. <laughs> I'm yes, just, I'm that just book is it. very serious. Like, if but you it's have good to know. Morals, it's like hard to do those things because I'm somebody that truly believes. You get back what you put out. So if you finessing people, you're going to get back tenfold. So I just can't do it. But listening to that book, I realized that life was not meant for me. I had to switch to, uh, it was another book he wrote. It was called. Um, See, that's where you lost me. He wrote another book. It you, was you like, keep saying he. I don't understand. It was a man. Why? I don't understand why women are take. I, I mean, I, I just don't know. I, I mean. Because I would take I would take advice from women and men, but women taking advice from men about being women always throws me the fuck well, off. Well, it's about how to finesse men, though. So it's not about how to okay. be a woman. I get it's what you're saying. I get what you're saying. A man to tell us how to finesse y'all. It was Ke you know who why I feel that way. What was that guy's name? Ken Samuels. Cam Ke Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels. Rest the, in peace. Before. Yeah, R.I.P. But, but yeah, I hate it. So I I crazy. I'm sorry. I, I never knew R. R. why P, but people like agreed with the I, things. I couldn't he believe said. that these um, women were sitting there hanging on to every word. It it, it 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 freaked me out. Because they're retarded. It's like certain things you need to think about and think about it. Like we can't say retarded no more. I'm sorry. <laughs> people sorry. just don't be thinking. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god, I just I don't know. But anyways, keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the whole tactics. But yeah, he has another book called uh, <laughs> Men, Men Don't Deserve Women Like You or something like that. Okay. Or, okay. I'm I, I might be messing up the title. I'm writing. This sounds more like, like positive. It's, it's, I'm sorry I came for you. No, it is not a positive title. Uh, That's why I'm like, it's like, or why you're, this is why you're single. Oh, something he's like, another kid. See, yeah. there's like, a heart the attack waiting like, for you. The, the titles be very <laughs> aggressive, <laughs> but the knowledge in the book be really true because it'd be like realistic like oh, you know and it takes it through. takes a person who really are ready to correct their wrongs to listen to the book like if you don't got thick skin i would definitely not suggest this to you because it's about training your brain to think right mm. and i'm not gonna lie I, even though i listen to the book i still like kind of messed up a little bit but um I'm definitely on it how to think more positive when it comes to dating. But red flags on the first date is just like overly obsessive too. I hate people that are overly obsessive. What are you on the what are you on the first date? What oh do you my mean? Gosh, you will be surprised. It won't even be the first date. We just exchange numbers and you are already crazy. N no. What do I you promise mean? you, lately, I don't know what's been going on, but lately it's like I 
don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, men just have been coming towards me and, well, gravitating towards me. And I just yeah. don't feel like being bothered a little bit. So, it's like, some of these men be crazy. No, the I, things they be saying, I just be like, who raised you? And I where could, is your mama? I could only imagine now. because Do you have um, a mama? It's, like, it, it has to be terribly hard to be a woman these days um uh a girl i was dating back in college she used to get those like these cosmo magazines or whatever mm-hmm. i guess do you know what cosmo yeah okay i, <laughs> I love the so, magazines so, so um um there was an article on one of it because i'd be reading it while she's getting ready and shit and it was an article about a dude that did not know this girl so i'll pretend i see you in class we don't even talk to each other just around the hall for two years I'm just following you. Oh, I am in love no. with you. Just, you don't even know. You Joe, don't even know that I'm watching you. Joe off of you. He, though, but see, but he ends up killing her. Joe off oh, of yeah. you. Oh yeah, I only watched season one on Lifetime. I was a, I was an original supporter of you. Um, But, but no, but so, but, but killed this and no one knew the connection. They couldn't figure it out. Yeah, this was a while ago. This is not when social media was even like the way it was. So I'm just like, I can only imagine the, the, the imaginations that people can have now with like OnlyFans, you give someone your voice or the whole thing is pandering to them like it's a personal experience. But if you're not sane of mind and you don't realize like I'm paying for this entertainment, Mm -hmm. this woman has a whole fiance or husband, kids, and this is entertainment and you're like, no, she's talking to me. Yeah. We belong together. That's why it's like, I'm very paranoid. Like, B, please. I'm sorry. I am always watching my bag. I be driving i'm checking all the mirrors to see if somebody's following me i am very paranoid because you know i'm my parents hate it but i'm like always like kind of like places a little bit by myself but i don't be caring because like a lot of people got my location she's strapped in that too so watch yourself just so you know (laughs) but it's like you know um it's scary especially here in atlanta like Hearing all those stories, like the the story that haunts me the most was the uh, that girl that died in Doraville, the the young girl. Um, she was murdered by the officer there. Oh, that, that shit was nuts. Me a lot, like that. Re- that situation really bothered me. And yeah, yeah, just yeah, hearing yeah. that, it's like just hearing other things, just about how the women are going missing here. And I don't watch First Forty Eight no more, but watching First Forty Eight and seeing all that like, crazy yeah, stuff no. here. It used to bother me. So it's like now daytime activities only. When I first got here, I used to be out at night all the time. It's very few. I can't do rare. it out here at night because a lot of people, too many people drink and drive out here, bro. Mm. At night, like, like, but recklessly. Oh, yeah. Not like, not, not like, okay, I had a drink and I'm trying to make it home and I'm trying to be in the straight line, but I'm swerving a little bit. I'm talking about, I know I've been drinking. I'm this doing ain't, 90. It's not the first time either. <laughs> I got a couple DUIs and I'm doing 90, switching lanes, listening to Money Bag Yo on the way home. Yeah. That's what the, that's what I'm talking about. Like people intentionally doing it. Like, like this is just what I do. I used to be one of those people. That's scary. But I never got DUI. I I, I got I Aww. I was um reaching I had stopped at a seven eleven to get a slice to absorb the um the uh the alcohol because I was coming from the city. So Living in Jersey City, I would um come from um, I would take the train back from uh the village, get off the pass station, get in my car. From the time trying to sober up, but this time I wasn't sober up. Got a pizza, got back in the car. Fat ass was trying to reach over to get the pizza, and I was swerving. And she didn't realize I was swerving because I was drunk. Um, and the state trooper pulled me over, but I was like an exit away, so he was like. Like, what did you have? Lord, and I told them, I told them, I was like, I had one beer. I told them, no, two beers. I told them, you know, but you tell, and I was like, but I was honest when I was like, honestly, officer, I was just being a fat ass trying to reach for my pizza. You could see the pizza. You could see the pizza right in the passenger seat. So he was like, look, just go straight home. Cause he could see I was on just an exit away. That's what I've never really had any bad run ins with cops. I've had way more positive run ins with cops than negative. I can go into the negative, but they really do outweigh the positive. Every time I've ever gotten pulled out, I've never gotten a ticket or anything. Don't be trying to pull me over now because, but I, like literally they'll give me a warning to let me know, like, because I, my, my record's clean. They must be done like me. I done got so much tickets. <laughs> the charm don't damn work on no damn police officers. I done got so much tickets.
Oh, child, I don't want to get into that, but I did. I, I, <laughs> you know, Jerome used to tell me I can write a book about my life. I, I know how to talk to officers. I just I, the most the only time I'm paranoid about officers, to be honest with you, is when I'm with my white friends because they don't. They, sometimes they want not remember, like they just won't remember, like yo, I am in the car, <laughs> and like you know, they just talk to cops in a certain way sometimes. And it's like, like sorry, well, I really sorry. wouldn't. No, I got some white friends that's aggressive. That's mm -hmm. like. That's like, what you pulling me over for? And I'm like, you don't even need to do all that smoke. Like, <laughs> just let them know what she was doing. I'd be telling officers straight up, like, uh, can you are you can you tell me what you pulled me over for? They're like, no, just sit and wait. Okay. I keep my hands. Like you I'm learn all ass. of this as a black man to learn where to keep your hands. I got my my, my all my stuff out so I don't have to reach for shit. I'm I am a pro at this shit. I, pr I would practice. Anyways, we, we, go, we go on the subject. <laughs> do you believe in marriage? I honestly do. I feel like now, though, I don't think most people believe in it no more. <laughs> you I sound really so do. sad. I'm so sorry. I am so sad about it because I feel like most people don't believe in it no more um, because they look at it from what I've heard recently. A lot of people look at it as a business thing. Um, I hate that term. Because I hate that too. Only because everyone's like, "Oh, marriage is just a contract." Everything's a contract. I just feel like <laughs> that apartment you stay in is a contract. Everything is, is a, a contract. contract. But you live there. I just feel like you know. I want to get married. Like I personally do. Like my parents are married. My sister is married. My brother, my oldest brother, is married. Like I'm around a lot of people that are married. I've seen, you know great marriages so i feel like it's nice to want to be married but i don't know i feel like i'm i don't know when i'm gonna meet my person because but you know i've been praying for my husband i so keep telling you just to let it ha it happens when you least expect it and um the thing about marriage is like i think i put too much weight and put pedestal i put up put marriage on a pedestal mm -hmm. um i am a product of divorce so mar marriage has always been something that, like, if I was going to do it, I wanted to be really sure about it. Um, and the thing about it, though, is, like, even now my ideas of what marriage is or could be is still evolving, just like with dating. Like, you just start learning things. But I would always say that I was only doing it once. I feel like I only need to get married once. Um, yeah, even if I was to get a divorce from this marriage, like, I don't think I would do it again. I didn't even expect to be married. I thought I was just, I, I literally, like, kind of like you're like, oh, I'm not, it's not happening. I was dating a lot. And then I just was like, fuck it. Forget it. I'm not even going to really try to uh, pursue it like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just chilled off of it for a bit. Um, but I always said if I did get married, I'd only want to get married once. I, I, I feel like even now saying that I'm like, I've been married for six years. Oh, I just um, heard like I was asking somebody at my job a question about like, the markers with with marriage and they were like if you make it through three um you got a chance but if you make it through seven you're really good because most people don't make it through seven but that's then i think the next hurdle was like 12 and then if you make it after 12 like you're locked in for life basically that's like, hilarious it's interesting because um like we're in marriage counseling i think marriage counseling is good and i also think just being having some kind of therapy or counseling for yourself I is feel healthy. Like people do, people shun therapy, but you don't have to go to therapy when things get bad. Honestly, that's kind of too late. How Literally. I feel like if you're going because shit that got bad, it is too late because y'all done harbored so many feelings that now it's just like you're gonna be harboring in therapy because you scared he or she might lash out on you in front of the therapist. Exactly. Like, so it's I feel like it's okay to have marriage counseling or even with relationships i knew a couple that had counseling it could it, so it was it's nothing wrong with that if you guys want it to work because you're always grow if if you live your life that way you're and always growing unbiased, and evolving yeah and i feel like it's having an unbiased person helping you get through exactly and understand each other from an aspect where y'all both can't then you talking to it. your friends but like i don't oh do any God. of that i don't yeah, do any that's, that's the one thing i said i was gonna do to like keep your friends out your love life or your relationship and because your they will put their past traumas on you or they don't really know your your situation. Like it's not their business. What you be telling them is only when y'all bad anyway. Exactly. So they're only gonna have that representation of the person. So when y'all good, they looking at you like, 
ill. Me personally, I try not to do that with my friends when they do come to me with relationship advice. I just give the best advice I can give without telling you, I'm not going to tell you to leave your person or nothing because we've all been in those relationships where we are continuously going back no matter how bad it gets. So I'm not going to tell you leave that man because you're going to leave him when you personally feel like leaving him. And I just personally, I just don't feel like bringing negativity to a negative situation already. And I hate people like that. Like I'm not, if you're coming to me about something negative about somebody and I know that nine times out of ten, you're probably going to communicate with them after this conversation and talk about it, and it probably may not be nothing that you just said to me. I'm not about to add more fuel to the fire like, oh, that nigga cheating on you. Oh, that man done got a whole new side, baby mama, everything. Like, I'm not going to do that because now I don't want you. He probably could just be sleeping. He probably could just be like <laughs> busy. Like it don't mean that he's do- excuse me doing anything on that level. And I just feel like people, which is another question I believe. I just feel like people just put a high standard when it comes to like dating or relationships on someone entertaining somebody else. When people really got nine to fives, they have a social life and a fucking sleep belt. Those three things are hard to fucking keep up with. And it's only 24 hours in a day. Thing is, if you, that's the thing about relationships is that it's all about trust. Really? If you don't have trust in something like you're going to always have your mind just wandering. And that's wandering. when it comes to the fact that you need to heal first before dating because you should not be putting your past traumas on other people's relationship or in your relationship. And I don't have patience for like people just in general, whether it's relationship or just you as yourself. If you keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, especially if I'm t- if I if I don't talk to you for months, almost a year, and you're still doing the same shit you were doing a year ago, it's like come on, come. It's there like, has to be some evolution. Honestly, I just listen. At the one point, if you're still doing that, I all I can do for you is listen because my advice ain't gonna change anything. All I can be is a listening ear and just be like, oh, okay. But that's crazy. If I'm hitting you with that, that means you've been doing this for a long time. That be, I have no more words for you because you still gonna do. Like, why am I wasting my breath and my wisdom if you still gonna go and do the opposite? Because they just want to get it, get it off your chest. But that's my thing. Like, Talk as we get older, exactly. We don't. No, nobody got no that's time for like, that. I'm learning. Like, <laughs> I'm somebody I used to like vent a lot about my relationships or just somebody I'm dealing with. And I've learned to really talk to the Lord about it because people will have you thinking your nigga is out here doing the most craziest of stuff because they will make it make sense. And now you like, damn, if they doing that, but I could have sworn he did that. Now you over here. Now you got an attitude. It's like having a bad dream or having a dream about somebody doing something to you. And then you wake up mad at them. Like, that's what it be like talking to some people. Like you really just be like, mad at your person and then it don't even be that but like you said it's them projecting and also you just you can't be mad once your friends don't like that person because you don't told because them. you done s- said all of this negative stuff yeah. about them but you want them to be nice around them when they're around yeah the real people not gonna go for it yeah so that's what i'm learning like i i've came a long way i used to talk a lot now i'm learning not to talk up talk a lot it's not it's just keep, you know, if you have an outlet, Shout like if you have a therapist that or something. That. Someone actually recently taught me that. They're like, you just shut the hell up. Yeah. Like, you you talk gotta, much. Nobody don't know all that they shit. They don't need to know because like, they going to have your mind going. And that's one day out of your life when you're talking, if you're having a complaint about someone. But also with infidelity, my thing is we're all adults. If you feel like something's not working out, Please. just say something. And leave. Talk about it, yeah. Like I feel like, but the problem is, especially with people that aren't married, the thing is, a lot of people want to have their cake and eat it. And that's my thing. Just say that, and that that's where the next question is going. But just say that. So then, if if that person's not about having an open relationship or open marriage, just peace out. But don't you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's not, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I I I just feel like we're all adults, and if you are in a relationship, someone that is built off of friendship and trust 
before you even before you're even intimate. Exactly. So if I'm heavy so, on that. so if there's anything where it's like any discrepancy where it's like yo, obviously there's gonna there's gonna be hurt and loss on both ends. Mm-hmm. But if you can come to someone and be like, yo, look, I I I feel like something something's happening and I feel like I want to pursue this. You should be able to have, of you course, you're going to be upset, but you should be able to have the conversation in part and I feel amicably. Like that's the problem when it comes to dating and relationships now, even probably marriages, is a lot of people don't let the other person make the decision. They just go ahead and make that decision selfishly mm. on their terms. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to just go ahead and do this because I know she wouldn't. Have. You don't know how he or she would feel about it unless you ask. That goes into give uh, the person a choice because then at that point, if you told them you gave them a choice and then now they're like, da, 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 they're yelling at you like you did this to me that you can say on this day <laughs> we had this conversation <laughs> you knew You're this so is calm. nothing new on this day so that goes like, into I am really big on that that goes into the next question though uh, monogamous and uh, polyamorous relationships I'm too selfish. <laughs> Monogamy all the way. I am a Taurus. I am territorial. I am too selfish. I am the only, well, not the only girl, I'm sorry. I am the youngest sibling, the only girl for my mom. So I am spoiled. I never even shared a room and you want me to share a man? I tell people that all the time. When they ask me, I'm like, boy, I never shared a room growing up. You want me to share a man? You insane. I think you're it, crazy. I feel like, and that's the thing, I think it always sounds good at first. You're like, oh yeah, I can go. And then you think about your partner with someone and you're like, exactly. I don't know. But see, I do, I have friends that um practice uh polyamorous relationships. And what I do notice about those relationships is that um there's a level of security and trust, mm-hmm. communication and compromise that has to be in abundance. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't have none of those I, in abundance. Yeah, because I'm like, I really commend it because for you to be able to do that, and then some of them have, you know, they have sex together. Like, and that's, that's I know you're looking like, well, that's, that it's it, it sounds like wild, but when you see like the actual love that they have and the respect that they have and the boundaries that they have, there's a, there has to be so much communication going on and so much self-awareness and confidence in yourself and knowing who you are to be able to participate in something like that. I'm not anywhere near yeah, that. No. But I feel it's... like that's like another episode of Fatal Attraction waiting to happen because I but... personally cannot. I feel like but... I would be lying to myself like, yeah, probably, yeah, great, we can do that. And as soon as you feed her some grits and don't feed me the grits, I'm mad. Cause what you doing? You like her more than me? But that's like... no, but that's a, that's the thing that is just that that is um a little crazy. Like it's just it, that's but that's the thing about trust. Um, what was it? It was like some story maybe on Reddit where the person was saying that what happened? Um, they found out this is not funny. I'm sorry. They found <laughs> out that um that they're uh girl had like been cheating like they cheated like at a um and this might have been a wife they met they cheated like at a concert or something like that and then they were like then they, the yeah like 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 they were backstage with the band and then they, <laughs> she said i had the concert then but then they start finding out other stuff and they were saying like apparently she had lied to their other couple friend and told them that they were in a po- um uh, open marriage polyamorous relationship and that he his case <laughs> That his kink was not knowing, <laughs> was, not, was pretending not knowing that it was happening, and then like they all found out that she was bamboozling all of them, and they oh all God. felt they all felt the way though, because that's such a break of trust <laughs> in a circle like that, like being being a little like, little season hot and ready. <laughs> yeah, that so ain't that fun? Like, ain't that, that messed so up, bro? Not, was like it, not was like his kink. I, so, I, when I read the Reddit stories, I always like picture like his kink is he doesn't like to know. <laughs> and they're like, and, they and they're like, and, and they're like, oh great, okay, so uh, <laughs> take your hair clothes off. I don't know, like, like yeah. And they found out that she was she was scamming. That is so funny. Oh, scamming to cheat. Ain't oh, that crazy Jesus, though? That but no, so I do funny. think that that there's something that's uh. But see, even but see, even in that, there's cheating though. Yeah, that's because true. there's still boundaries and there's still trust and there's still a contract being had that we're either doing this together or we're not doing it or you let me know. But even then, you can still go around and 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 be sneaky. That's 
That's crazy. So like you I don't like I don't like that, y'all, but <laughs> do you believe in the traditional marriage with children? Yeah. How many kids like, you want? Ooh, that's a hard question. I'd be like between like my mom would think I'm never gonna have kids because I just can't deal with the frustration. But at one point I did want like, you know, five kids. Now I'm like, Jesus. One is a lot. My nephews and nieces get on my nerves. They <laughs> I love y'all so much, but they be stressing me yeah, out. You said, Lord. but I feel I, so. I feel like we're gonna try one first and see how it goes. This is no. I feel like you'd be a great mother. This is no offense to you. I just feel like that during like the actual delivery that you would just be annoyed. You know, that you would just be so annoyed. Now I can't even have a drink. <laughs> You and now you got me in this so hospital. Annoyed. Like, why are you coming out? I, I see you punching doctors. Like, you told me this is going to be an hour ago. I see your husband like, please, you like, shut up. You did this to me. No, honestly, <laughs> I do feel like it's going, because I'm going to be mad. Like, first of all, this Eating baby, ice chips. like, for you. I'm worried, I'm concerned about my weight. <laughs> And once again, I can't even have fun like I normally do. Like nine months without one alcoholic beverage is crazy. That's why you see these women that they, they're like, you can at least have like a, a glass of wine and then people like wait. Yeah, more. they can. Yeah, yeah, I worked at this restaurant one time. They had a baby shower. She, they like, oh, she can have at least two Proseccos. I'm like. Yeah, and people be like. This she's, okay. She's y'all drinking, need to sign a waiver because I ain't about to serve this and y'all try to come back at I, me. I've seen some like a lady drink a little bit too much for what I was comfortable with. But I'm like, she had, I'm hoping she talked to her doctor. You know, I mean, all the friends and family were letting coming her. coming out drunk. I mean, could explain a lot of things. Um, <laughs> they, what, I, I, I don't even know. Uh, I thought I was going to say something uh, in response to what you were saying. But, oh, kids, you are right. Um, when I was in middle school, my friend's uh, aunt had a baby. Um, and she had been trying for a, lot, uh, for a long time with her partner. And we had came over. And she was still pregnant at this time. But she was putting, like, the um, pampers away or whatever. And we were we didn't have an, even really hit puberty puberty yet, but she's just like, you guys think you're gonna have babies at some point? She's like, just remember that is expensive. Very. This is how this is how, like, if you and every if, time I have baby fever, I think about how much trips I want to take a year and realize. Yo, wrap <laughs> the whole wrap it up thing and all that. I think in in AIDS, obviously all that stuff works, but telling people how expensive a child will be, not even just on your wallet, but even for time. That got me because I was like, Pampers are how much? Is like, this much? Is that much? I'm like, that's why I'm like, maybe a dog first because I'm, I, I would need a million dollars before I work having at a the kid. hospital 12 hours and I have to come home and deal with a kid. I would be so miserable. But, I would probably start crying in the bathroom. But that's why people be miserable. <laughs> that's why people be miserable with their kids sometimes. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. I do, you have to that's really why I'm plan. I'm still trying to like take my time with it even though i have baby fever and i'm in that stage where like all my friends are having kids and they're settling down and i'm still here i feel like basically the rich aunt no <laughs> mans just traveling and partying and still at the age that i am i would be comfortable if i had a million dollars in the bank yeah. Plus more, but just like just specifically for yeah, the for child, the kid, yeah. just for the child. Then I'd be comfortable with having a, a kid. I can't. I. 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 I just, it's just things that like. Um. And I just feel like with every generation, you want to progress, mm -hmm. and just seeing, you can call them mistakes, but just seeing where there's there was opportunity for growth to better the next generation with the past generation is just certain things that I just need to be in line and for this kid to and be able to have like, and the resources that they need to be successful. On that. That's exactly what I was about to say. Like, you know, we just can't be having kids because you feel like you want a kid. Like, are you ready to take care of this baby? You about to birth this baby into misery. Brenda had a baby. Like, come on now. Literally. Like, girl. Like, they fight to be here and then we, we make their lives. Oh, and then the ones that have the baby for the man. uh no, Lord, I ain't gonna say that on this podcast. That's still a thing. Podcast. That's still girl, happening. I'm about to say, girl, like we got to be. Yeah. <laughs> no, girl, some girls could be having them babies for that man and be depressed. Like that still happens. That's definitely a thing. No. No, I know. I mean, that's crazy to me. Um, but I guess. 
it's kind of sad. Ain't games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about divorce, and where does that stem from? Honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I kind of. I don't agree with divorce, but I just feel like okay, like how we just talking about kids. If the marriage is going so bad that it's affecting your kids, maybe I need to think about it. I think there's no time to waste, and and especially if you're unhappy in a situation. I, before I was like, I didn't believe in divorce. Um, but see, even my grandparents on my um mother's side, they got a divorce. But no, 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 they didn't get a divorce. That's the thing. He way. he also had a, a whole nother uh, life and a whole nother family. Um, I got some um, uncles and aunts that I really would like to connect with. They're half Italian, um, but uh, but um, they uh, he his thing was he was never going to not be legally married to her. That happened, but until they died separately, they were still married, mm-hmm. um, which I think caused some a little friction because with the the other family he had never married. Um, um, but there's still respect there, and I know there was some, there's some family drama about how things were handled at the funeral that I wasn't a part of. That I want y'all to know that y- y'all family, no matter what. So and um, respect to y'all, y- y- y'all mother. Like, um, but um, divorce affected. I didn't think that it would affect me, but even as a seven year old, I had once told my parents that if they got a divorce, I would understand. Mm-hmm. I could see as a child that they were not getting along. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of the way that kind of changed the trajectory of me and my siblings' lives, I would never bestow that on children. Like, children are really affected by divorce, depending on how healthy their sure. parents' relationship is. Um, and if you're not happy in something, I don't think that... I used to feel differently. I used to feel like... And, you know, if we married, then we're gonna have to work through it. But I just feel like if it's gonna take that much work, that if it's that exhausting, and you're we're not happy, everyone deserves to be happy. And I feel so. How do you feel like about the people who do separation before divorce? Would you say suggest that first to see if you really need the divorce or if you just need it space? I feel like that's necessary. I feel like um, if we are talking about even when we hear about our favorite celebrity couples get a divorce and we're like, oh my God, she got a divorce. I believe that that, that, that relationship was probably over a year ago. Mm-hmm. There was probably behind the scenes, separation, counseling, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And then it, it just didn't work. Yeah. I don't think people really, um, unless it was a, a shaky thing in the beginning or, or already, I don't think people really go into divorce is just like divorce. You know, when you but by the time you hear about it and everything's processed, then yeah, it might seem that way, or for appearances, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot that goes into to divorce, just like, and that's the difference between um, sometimes being in, but even in a long term relationship, you're gonna have those hurdles where contracts have to be signed because now, say, if you have a personal business or whatever, or a business together, there's you have to get that all sorted out, even just small things like car insurance, phone bills. All that stuff has to be sorted out. Like, so, um, I don't know. I think there, I think, I don't think there's one right way or one wrong way, but I think that's the most logical way. Yeah. Step is for me, at least would be like separation. See if this is what we want. See if there's a chance to come back. And if not, it's just weird because people for a little bit, but certain, certain of my exes, I could still hit a, uh, hit up with a text and be like, happy birthday or something like that. Mm. For for years, and and obviously now we've lost touch. But even I'd be um, open, and honest with my wife about those relationships that I still had a little bit. Where like we might just say happy birthday to each other because to me, when you really say you care about someone you and you love that. someone, you want to see them happy. It's not like motherfuckers are caught in them like yo, you want to sneak. It's like and that's you're happy. The, that's one thing I learned too. Like when it comes to like dating and just being in a serious relationship is when you do things to to for somebody to show you that they care without saying it is when they do things they are thinking about you when they're doing it and i'm not saying like oh i wonder what she's doing today it's like oh i'm in the club with my homeboys and depending on the girls like some girls don't like their men getting danced on if he knows that he'll be like i'm not gonna do that because i know how it will look and how it will make her feel da 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 or 
just caring about her image to know that I shouldn't be out here doing certain things because how it would make her look. That's that's how you know you care about somebody. That's the number one thing I say. I say just don't. I'm not going to make you look like a fool out here. Don't have me looking like a fool out here. Mm -hmm. That's just, to me, it's just disrespectful. Um, But being able to have real relationships with people where it's like, I want to see you happy. Because at first, I would feel a way like, damn, like, I'm still, I'm kind of losing contact with that person. Just checking in. But I'm like, that means that we good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they're happy. They don't need this checking anymore of like, you good? You happy? Like, because I don't know, like, you go attach to people and you... We're all still, especially when you're younger, you start to realize as you get older, like we're all still growing. Mm -hmm. And that potential that you see in people that you've dated or whatever, that's still going to be there. Social media is cool because now you can peep in and be like, oh, they're happy. Like, got the 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 the, the husband, the kid, and their their, their 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 profession's going great. I don't know. I might that might be weird. I like to see people win. No, if I spent time actually... with you and I and I I gave time and invested in you at some point in your journey, I want to see that you did, that you're doing okay. It hurts to see when people aren't doing okay. Depends. <laughs> Depends on the person. Some of y'all, some of y'all deserved it. That's y'all karma. There's some people I never, t- ever, ever talked to again, unfortunately. Yeah. But the people that were like, I was like, any, any time past cross, but like, yeah, there, there's a couple of those. Because, and usually that happens when I realize like you're not growing, you haven't learned, the stuff that didn't work in our relationship is the same shit you're still doing. Do you think that relationships end, and this could be a question, but like I never ended a relationship and been like, I hope that bitch don't ever fucking grow. I hope her next relationship is as bad as this one. Like I never, ha- I've never left a relationship thinking that. I've been like, I really <laughs> Some of y'all did not wish the best. Y'all fucked me over too bad. I said, ooh, I hope the next bitch ruin his motherfucking life. Because I was nothing but good to you. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to sit there, Jerome. You are a very strong person. Cause... Holy mm-hmm. fuck. No, but people be thinking I'm weird because because I feel that way. I'm like, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't fake kick it. I can't fake kick it with niggas. I, I'm, see, I see. Some I'm, of them, I can't, I'd be like, I, <laughs> I can't, I, like, you know, if... And one I, thing the Lord don't play about me, they done got it back. And I'd be like, see, told you. You don't play with the Lord's children. Especially, it just be those instances where I've been honest and I've communicated something and I felt like you played in my face for, like, an extended period of time. I am not wishing you well. I had more manipulative shit, like, more like, you know you have, you're unstable mentally a little bit. And you know that, like... I'm working on myself and I trust what you're saying. So if you say something about me, I might believe it. But at that point I had done my work. So then I start realizing this person was projecting something on me and they ended up admitting to projecting it on me. But like mentally what that could have done to me and the fact that you're such in a toxic place that you are openly and knowingly projecting things on people when it comes to mental health is nuts to me. That's, and then if you're still not growing, I can't, I don't even wish you bad. I hope you get the help, but I hope you don't project that. I hope you don't do that to anyone else. Yeah. But you need to get the help. But I can't. I can't have any connection with you. I can't do nothing for you. Don't hit me up. I'm not picking up. That's the only time that you'll see me. You see my energy completely change. That's the only time when I feel like you know that you need to work on yourself, Mm -hmm. and you're still involving everybody else in your BS. That's scary. We're too old. Like not even being too old, but like just wanting to be better for yourself. Mm -hmm. And to be centered and to be able to have positive and healthy relationships, to be on that and know that you're doing it. You have to work. Like, I feel like a lot of people skip the part of where they have to work in their self. They have to practice that self-love and just awareness of what they need to do to do to like be better before get in a relationship. Because, well, in that situation, they were knowingly doing it, but to like, some people subconsciously do it and it's like insane because it's like they don't realize it. But then it's scary because I feel like some people be lying and they do know what they're doing. They just trying to see if the person can deal with it. Like, oh, can I? Let me <laughs> but that's how I feel. That's exactly how I Because I'm sick of y'all prettiest problem and all of that weird shit that be trending. Y'all need to stop that. Prettiest, Why what's a prettiest it's like, problem? I don't know. That's like a catch type of sin. But it's like, don't be nobody problem. Like, 
I really stand on like you need to be somebody's peace. I don't and that toxic love, that weird stuff. It's like blowing up phones, being crazy. It's what people see. If somebody make you do that, y'all don't need to be together. And I just feel like I mean, I have not always been perfect, but that's kitty stuff. I did that as a child. Like we are grown. That toxic energy, that toxic love, that weird stuff. Like I heard like somebody told me like the oh lord don't beat me up in new orleans but like the girls in new orleans like they real aggressive like they'll talk to a nigga crazy just for him to talk back to them crazy and laugh that is sick i don't even think that's just um uh, uh subject to a, a, a specific region i feel like a that's lot just, of people is that the well, new no, thing well think about upbringing think about just for instance i talked about my parents marriage there was a lot of arguing that happened there was a lot of um, financial issues, a lot of um, secrets being kept. You start the, if you're a child, certain things that happen, like when we have trauma, most of the time we're like, yo, that was normal. That was normal for me. That was my norm. So you don't even realize it's a trauma. So when people see these things, you see hanging up. For instance, growing up, if bill collectors called the house, they'd be like, don't pick up the phone, hang it up. As an adult, I had to get to some point where it was like, that's not the right thing to do. I got to call and talk to these people so I can work something out or let them know that the, the, the payment's coming. Like at some point you have to think about what your upbringing is and then what you want for your life and yeah, how you want to live your that life. That is very true. Like back to the conversation we had about therapy, that is why people need to go because I, I don't know. It was somebody I was talking to that said like, your child it was a long time ago and i was like yeah i'm never talking to you again but it was like your childhood don't affect you now yes it does yes. your childhood traumas affect the way you think yes. the way you feel like that's why you act the way you do because of what you've seen as a child like literally that's the start that's like saying a baby giraffe don't know how to walk or something but they actually have to learn how to walk since they got the womb like they learned that they practice what to do since a child since they grew up so it's like um i do feel like a lot of childhood traumas is the reason why some relationships don't work because people are ready to face the music when it comes to certain things they're not ready to they feel like because they saw it, it's right. And a lot of things are, some things we've seen as kids is, is not right. And that's the thing is like, you have to balance that out. And only by growing and having relationships with other people, you start to see how a mother treats their, another mother treats her daughter, how another father treats her son or daughter, how that couple interacts. And you start to see healthy mm -hmm. relationships and you start to realize, damn, maybe my shit wasn't so healthy. Maybe my childhood wasn't as healthy as I wish it was. And then you have to think about your parents and what their upbringing was and what their relationship to their parents was. Mm -hmm. You start to realize maybe that wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And we were joking about the boomers on the other episode, but like, you know, my parents are boomers. It's very hard to have some of these conversations with them when it when it comes about about childhood trauma because they never even dealt with their childhood trauma because no one was there. The way we're so open, even talking about social media, we're open about self healing, spirituality, and 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 not being shamed. They didn't have they didn't they didn't have that like the, the way we do. So it's very hard they for really some of these people to talk differently. And you know, I I give them the benefit of the doubt of that, but it's still there's still accountability that needs exactly, to be had. But you need to be able to grow for yourself. Growing. Yeah, like we are still growing. No matter if you're 60 years old, you are still growing. I hate those. I hate meeting those older people that's just really stuck in their ways and just feel like, oh, I done did it. Da da da. Okay, and you was born in 1978. It is 2023, <laughs> girl. That, isn't that nuts? Because it's like, how are you not? I could not imagine. My no matter what age I am, <laughs> I can't imagine what age I am me not continuing to try to be the best version of myself to just get stuck in your ways and just be like, that's it. You should always try to elevate. Like I salute my, uh, my dad cause he's always trying to be hip. It cracks me up. Cause why are you, <laughs> She's such why are you on TikTok? But why you got a Snapchat? But okay, if see, that's helping you get in touch with the news, because he like politics and stuff. So well, see, why it'd not? It'd be cool to like text him like, "Daddy, you seen this about Biden?" And he, and he sit like, there and Hell talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so it's like cool, you know. He got a little Facebook now, so it's like nice that he's because, using electronics. So what's the other thing you can say? I don't. 
when back in my day yeah. we had the rolling around and, it's and like, i don't want to use this anymore like, doing that is helping my mom get out of her way so now she's like a youtube freak she's on that's YouTube. what your youtube gets them <laughs> she's she be watching like when i get home she get on my nerves because she be showing me why are you showing me stuff that pop up see, in the news feed as soon as you log in like girl see you would joke you would make fun of me because i was telling you about having having a um try to sneak watching porn and the pussy was there and the titty was there but see for them they only have like 12 channels <laughs> I don't even know how old they your parents had, are. They probably had magazines. They probably even had the channels. They had tapes, actually. So, they had tapes. So to be able to just type something on the computer and that pop, It's come like on, amazing y'all. to do. It really be cracking me up. Like my mama showed me a video of the biggest dogs in the, That's in the world. I'm like, girl, why you want to know this? But okay. Thank you. It was a 15 minute video. She made me sit and watch it with her. Like, girl, I am trying to watch TV. Like, <laughs> do you believe in friendship after relationships have ended? We kind of talked about it a little bit, but we didn't go. I feel on. like it depends on the person. I honestly do feel like most of my friend uh, relationships, I'm kind of cool with them. They know they don't get called and talk to me every day, but exactly. But, but we like, I feel like we cool. Like it ain't like it ain't I no wish, smoke if I see you on the I other side of the street. I wish you the best, but not with me. But I wish you the best. Like you know, I'm always rooting for those people, especially you know the ones that I see growing and stuff like that. I'm never like the person that's mad. I hate the people that be like, oh, I can't be friends with my ex because. Are they just jealous because like they moved on and it's like a why can't it be me type of thing? I like, feel like that's something that's learned. You learn that like, from somewhere where you it can't. It just didn't work. That it just didn't work, and it's nothing wrong with that. You, it is plenty of fish in the sea. You just gotta keep swimming. We be, but but you know what? If if people weren't crazy after breakups, there wouldn't be shows like Fatal Attraction. Um, do you think people still value marriage? This is a, damn, that's the last question. Do you think people still value marriage? Yeah, we answered that earlier. I don't think they do. You did say that. That yeah, was your I take don't think on that. They do. I really don't think they do, especially with this new poly polyamorous relationship. Yeah, people like I done met so much guys that said they've been doing research about it and the benefits and I love that for you. But just know when you told me you were doing research on that, I never took you serious a day again. I would have to. I because would have to. That's scaring me. You're doing research. I, I, I'm not. I would. It would have to be. I would have to. Definitely not in this marriage. It would have to be. I was divorced and I met someone that completely altered my whole way of thinking for me to even experiment with something like that i can consider it I but i couldn't like even it's go it's so one-sided because i think men just think about it as being a man with two women and exactly I but them, like how would you feel if i had another man and you was my other man i, I just don't i'd rather i'd rather not be in a how marriage and rather be dating and That's, then when pisses me off, the first thing they'll be like, so we both go be having sex at the same time? No, you're not. But see, that's Separated. my... Separated. That's my Y'all just know about each other. I feel like, I don't know if you know, like, And we go to brunch um, together, and y'all pay for the tab. Do you know, like, there's, like, soulmates, and then there's, like, karmic, and then there's, like, twin flames, you know? About, what is all of that? What? We'll, we'll, have a whole, we'll have a whole podcast about <laughs> it. But I just feel like when people can do that, I just think there's another... Um, another and i'm not saying like it's a better level than any other thing i just think that they're on a, a frequency that they are really connected in a way to um with their sexuality as well but inside their relationship where they feel comfortable to do that because everything we're, that we're saying that that's the why it's a no for us is insecurity for us mm -hmm. which and that's the thing about accountability and like I'm even when sure. people are and when people are like oh like even when you'll say like I, we mispronounce things or um maybe get something wrong don't ever try to come first in comments like that because we're not people that are afraid of oh, being yeah. wrong or taking accountability or mispronouncing we, something. We had the, the definition wrong for mukbang. Y yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's that, that's the whole point. The stuff like that doesn't like up. We I'm not, I'm not like we just learned what it was. Exactly, kind of learned, but still. So it's like um, with stuff like that, it you know, I don't, I, 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 I don't know, like, I don't know. Mm. But I would say I take, um, well, I don't, I have seen a lot of like my college friends getting married though. So I do salute that. Like, I'm happy that I do see that some people still believe in true love. So that's nice. But I just feel like 
I just got to move out of Atlanta. I, I think it's Atlanta. But see, I will say, I, I think everything is, is Atlanta. Um, but <laughs> uh, but I think uh, but that's one thing, even though I have my qualms with the, the South because what it's rooted in um, with like slavery and stuff in its history there. Um, but I do like a lot of the values that the, the that Southerners have, which really revolves around family, mm-hmm. marriage, children, the house. I do value all of those things. And um, I read an article that said that more people are getting married and they're just not having kids. Like they're they're able to travel. That's how expensive expensive things are now that they're like they're Maybe. able to travel. They're able to have fun. So it's like almost like um, even just going back to the themes of like still evolving in a marriage and what a relationship is to you. Like we don't have to be married. Married, married to these things from the past and these traditions, they can evolve a little bit to fit what our needs are. Mm -hmm. Just like you're like, you want to five kids now, you're like, hey, maybe like it's okay. But my oldest sister was like, she was never gonna have kids out of the 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 three of us. She's the one that had kids first, whole family and everything. Like I think sometimes you know, let everything evolve. Mm -hmm. Just do a little bit, you know, you know. My grandma always said the people who always say they don't want kids end up having the most. That, 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 I believe that. My grandma didn't want kids and she had like eight, nine Whew. kids. Yeah. Back then they were popping them out. That's yeah, how my, my, um, my dad's mother had like 13. Yeah, I think it's about eight of them. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I, this, I know this guy who said he wants to have eight kids too. And I said, huh. You must be uh, paying for everything. I mean, like you know, I'm never gonna work. Cause eight you, kids, that's a job. Cause yeah, if you, cause if you have money, then I, I feel like you can. But also, I'm, I don't, I'm always paranoid about like, just like birth in itself, like the act of it, and mm-hmm. then like the complications, especially when you talk about plastic. Yeah. Like it's just like I, it, so many I, times. I feel like people don't take account that, um, our diet is different. Especially down yeah. here in the south, so that affects a lot. So when it comes to having kids, you can't. Our diet has to change because yeah. you know you can go into preeclampsia, you know, all that extra stuff that could happen. So it's very scary for sure. That's why I'm like, if a man get one kid out of me, he bamboozled me. I'm promise y'all. Yes. Because um. <laughs> I'm not just having a kid for anybody. That's nine months. And then it's really like, in my head, it's like a death sentence. It's a life or death thing. Like, you really playing with my life because I could die. Yeah. Or, you know, anything could go wrong. My thing is so like. So it's very scary. And then all of that is, is just scary too. But I always always have to remember how strong and resilient the female body is though. Um, but then also when i have a kid like i do feel like my life is over everything that i do is going to be for that kid i, tell people, I used to joke and tell people i was going to be depressed the whole pregnancy oh what do you oh i mean it like in a i mean it like, oh. <laughs> i mean it as in like every like even the things that i do now i'm thinking about what it's for my future children but like once that Everything, it's all its all for them. Whatever they need, yeah. going to school, reading books with them, helping homework, helping them with their, their lines, that whatever they want to do. That's, I, I want to be a dedicated a to my children. Shocking, like, uh, unexpected pregnancy, yeah. I'm going to be depressed the first, probably, probably, <laughs> probably 80% of the pregnancy. I, I can imagine. Until that. I have to accept that this is happening. I can, I can imagine that. Because I'm a, not ready. I'm going to be like, I still have things I'm trying to do. A kid? Yeah, I would be sad. So, Lord, I know you, you've you been hearing those up. weird manifestations, but don't, just wait. You know my heart. Birth control. <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't know. Condoms. There we go. Strap up. Do all of that. Because, yeah, it's scary. Tube know. stud. Bisectomy. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got anything else you want to talk about say or no i feel like you know this was a good episode yeah this is this is fun this i like this really episode nice. i liked it yeah i know i love talking about dating even and, though i'm saying and i got us a, uh, a james Baldwin quote this is actually a quote from an interview that he was doing um i actually use it on i just did a new song and i actually use it on there and he says a man can fall in love with a man a woman can fall in love with a woman it's nothing anyone can do about it it's not the problems of the law it has nothing to do with the church and if you lie about that you lie about everything hmm. the way he says it is so much better but i just was like damn he's he he's right just love love ain't got really nothing to do with the with gender. laws or church yeah. gender anything like that it's even if love. even even if you don't put a contract on it it doesn't make anything less yeah. or better than anything. Love is just love. Period. And if we lie about that, we will lie about everything. This Honestly. Bars. That's so true. I'm learning that. You gotta love unapologetically. Love unapologetically, y'all. She always sends us off with a good one. This is Jay Schuler, and this is My Rag. And this is the Everybody Hates You Podcast. Signing off. <laughs> 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 that, was so that was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs>